Hey, you clicked on my video. Appreciate it. Now be sure to like the video and subscribe to the page. Long enough to cover the subject and short enough to keep it interesting. Welcome to Out of My League. I'm Nick Diaz. Now, when I ask LSU fans, what are the strengths of this year's team? They immediately say, well, wide receiver and defensive line. You look at the talent, you look at the depth, and you look at the experience at wide receiver and defensive line. And that's right. But for some reason... No one brings up safety. Now, I don't think people realize how much talent and depth are at the safety position at LSU. And maybe they don't realize that because that wasn't a talking point for a lot of uh, LSU media or media at all when it came to what are LSU's strengths because the safety position has sort of been devalued uh, in recent years because of the way the game of football has changed. Maybe that has something to do with it. And partially because you may not have a first-rounder that is a starter at the safety position. But looking at that safety position, I can't find a weakness at that spot. Not one. So looking at the starters in spring, the two high safeties, free safety and strong safety, Jay Ward and Joe Fusha. Those were the guys that started all throughout spring, and they're probably going to be the starters going into the season. And at the nickel safety, Greg Brooks. And mind you, Greg Brooks had the most interceptions all throughout spring practice. Now, it's in spring practice, so you don't understand the context of all of them. We saw a video of one of them. But here's what's interesting to note about your starting three safeties. Jay Ward, he was your third leading tackler last season, and he had... 11 starts. Not played in 11 games. He had 11 starts at free safety. Joe Fusha, coming from Arkansas, he was the team captain. He has 34 SEC starts at Arkansas. And Greg Brooks, your projected nickel starter, has 31 SEC starts at Arkansas. So as far as guys that need to prove it at the SEC level, you don't have that problem. Now, returnees, when it comes to depth, you have all these names. Todd Harris, Matthew Langlois, Sage Ryan, Derek Davis, Major Burns, Jordan Tolls. But you know what I noticed about all of them when you look through that whole list? Some young, some old. Every safety behind the projected starters is at least a five-star or has at least three years of college experience. Outside of Matthew Langua, he's the one exception. But Matthew Langua got reps with the second team all throughout spring practice. Now, that was mostly due to injuries and guys being out. But every single guy on this roster, including the backups outside of Matthew Langua, is either a five-star coming out of high school, and if they're not a five-star, then they have at least three years of being on a college campus. Todd Harris, he's a six-year senior, He's only started four games, but he's a six-year senior graduate student. Sage Ryan is going to be a nickel safety. That's where he's kind of settled in. That's where he feels more comfortable, close to the line of scrimmage. He was a five-star. Number one safety coming out of the state of Louisiana. Now, he's nursing an injury from last year, and also he admitted that the culture shock of moving away from home at 18 years old, even though it's only an hour from where he grew up, was difficult for him. He wasn't going to lie. The college lifestyle really got to him, living on his own, doing his own laundry, going to class. There's no shame. It happens to almost every college player. And then you have five-star Derek Davis, who's going into his sophomore year. He was the number one safety in the country coming out of high school from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I, he totally fell off my radar last year. Then again, a lot of things fell off my radar last year because I was just trying to drain it from my memory, but Derek Davis was the number one safety in the nation from Pittsburgh, PA, coming out of high school. He was your highest rated safety, not Sage Ryan. We just talk about Sage Ryan because he's from Lafayette. Major Burns, four-star guy from Baton Rouge, transferred from Georgia, three-year sophomore. He had five starts last season. Jordan Tolles, he's a third-year safety. He hasn't started yet, but Again, an experienced guy, been on a college campus. They tried to move him to corner to add some depth in spring, but then they realized, no, it's just better to leave him out about at safety. So when you look at that, you go three deep at the safety position. Not just free safety, strong safety. You go three deep at two high safeties and nickel. You have three at each position. So do you have talent? Yes. Do you have experience? Yes. Do you have depth? But here's the thing, you also have versatility in case of emergency. 
Greg Brooks can play nickel. He's going to play nickel, but he can also play high safety, or he can play corner. Jay Ward was a cornerback before you moved him to safety last season, and he became your full-time starter. Says Ryan can play cornerback. He can play nickel, or he can play safety. He did it all throughout high school. So all the depth that you have, you also have versatility to go along with it. In case, God forbid, and I don't think this is going to happen this year, you have another slew of injuries. But with all that depth and talent and experience you have coming back, something we also don't talk about when it comes to all these position groups are the position coaches, which outside of Brad Davis are all brand new. Well, have any of y'all actually looked at Kerry Cook's secondaries and everywhere he's been as a secondaries coach, specifically with the safeties? So he was at Wisconsin, Notre Dame, Oklahoma, Texas Tech. He was in the NFL for a year with the Minnesota Vikings. When he was at Notre Dame, he was there for two stints. He had a top 15 pass defense in the country. In one of those years, he was a co-defensive coordinator. When he was at Wisconsin, one of those years, they had the number one pass efficiency defense in the nation, in the entire country. And when he was at Oklahoma... They had the number one pass defense in the Big 12. Plus, he has experience calling plays as a coordinator, and he has some NFL experience as well, and high school experience. He's he's done it all. So, when you have a head coach that will get the most out of their talent, like you have, say, with Brian Kelly, we know he's going to hold players accountable. But also, specifically with the position coach, you have a position coach that will get the most out of the talent that you have. And when you look at his resume... He's had success at almost every school he's been to in some form or fashion. So there's no reason to say he can't do it with this group, with this talent at LSU. But here's the problem LSU safeties may run into. All of this is wonderful and fine and good. Experienced coach, experienced players, a lot of talent, a lot of all that stuff. But the issue is you do have a lot of new guys. And you have a lot of new guys that are going to be starting. Now, Brooks and Fouché have played together, but a lot of these guys that they're going to be communicating with, they have not. Todd Harris and Jay Ward, they're new with Brooks and Fouché. Communicating with the new cornerbacks, and you have a ton of new cornerbacks this year. You have a new defensive coordinator and a new scheme. You have also two new defensive backs coaches. You can have all that depth and talent and experience, but if that depth and talent and experience doesn't communicate correctly, then all that depth, talent, and experience is just running really hard the wrong way. So you have all these guys that are smart players and smart coaches. I think that they can figure out the communication stuff. It's just when will they figure out all the new communication stuff? Is it going to be in fall camp, or did they already figure it out in spring practice, or will it be after week one working out the kinks, or will be will it be an issue going into, say, week five or six? It's not really a big concern that you need to have in mind, but it is something that you need to keep in mind going into fall camp, and it's really hard to know for sure until we see them play on the field. But the keys for these LSU safeties to look good this year are, one, communication, because You've got new guys, new scheme, new coaches, but that kind of goes with every position on LSU's roster. But the second thing is that I'm really interested in seeing are the young, talented guys, the two five-stars, Sage Ryan and Derek Davis. Will they take a step forward? Obviously, they had horrible coaching last year. Do they take that step forward as five-star, highly rated guys that everybody in the country wanted? But when it comes to the strength of this LSU football team, Wide receiver, defensive line, and safety will be the strength of this team. Thanks for listening to Out of My League. If you like what you heard, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Or follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok in the description link below.